Yep. Yes. Okay. So we are officially open. Yay. So welcome to the uh, Enterprise Vision Awards, aka the EVAs 2024, our 13th awards um, program. And today we are opening and welcoming guests from around the UK to join us to find out more about the application process. So the awards, um, I'll show you here, just in case you haven't seen. Here's the statue that we met. This is what they officially say, one we made earlier. Uh, so this is what all our lovely winners get on the night, the very coveted Eva statue. Um, and the first part to get on your way to get one of these lovely statues is by entry. So today is all about how to um, create an effective award entry. And so we're joined today by Heather Waters from NatWest. Hi, Heather. Good morning, Carl. Hello, everybody else. Nice to be here. Statue. Um, and Heather's just going to tell you a little bit about what her program, what her role is at NatWest, and she's been working with the awards now for 11 years. So I'm going to hand over to Heather, who'll tell you more about her role uh, with the awards and how she helps um, female business uh, companies to grow, uh, connect, and to do more business. So over to Heather. Thank you. Thanks very much, and hello, everybody. Um, Delighted to be here today. As Carl has mentioned, we are headline sponsors for the EVAs and have been now for 11 years. Um, very much part of the bank's um, passion and mission to support more female entrepreneurs to start and scale their business. And that's what we do every single day. The EVAs gives us the opportunity to celebrate the success and sharing that success as well. So um, mm. one of the big parts we love about it is the fact that we get to help people on that journey. So with today's event, um, my colleague Jess, you'll hear from shortly, we'll try and see how we can help you actually do the application, do a good application. And you'll hear from Debbie Tilly as well, which is great that this is support. It's not just about the awards, it's about how do we help you on that journey as well. So good luck. Please do apply. It's great to be part of the judging process as well. And uh, hopefully I'll see you at the finals. Thank you. Jess, would you like to share your slides? Oh, amazing, thank you. And hello, everyone. Um, just by way of introduction, uh, my name's Jess and I run the NatWest Accelerator here in Manchester. It is a national programme that supports entrepreneurs to grow and scale the businesses. Uh, we've got 13 hubs across the UK. Um, so if you are an entrepreneur looking to grow your business um, and would like some support to do so, please do check out the NatWest Accelerator. Um, I've been involved with EVAs now uh, for the last few years. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity to, to celebrate the things that you're doing. Um, founders are doing amazing things all the time, um, but you're always focused on what you haven't yet achieved. So this is a great opportunity, whether you are a founder with your own business or, or you're working within an organisation, to to reflect and, and be recognised for the amazing work that you're doing. Um, so I'm going to run through briefly now the application process, um, which always seems to be a barrier as to why people won't apply for awards. Um, you know, they don't know where to start with an application or they don't feel like they've got anything great that they want to share. Um, so I'd love to just spend a, a few minutes talking you through the EVA's application process um, and breaking down some of those barriers and letting you recognise that you know, we're here and we want you to do well. Um, so how do we write a great EVA application? So nominations are live now. Um, some people have already been nominated. It may be something that you've been looking at. Um, so if you have been nominated, please do complete the application. Um, and if you haven't, please do check out the website and see what categories there are. But when starting your application, a few simple rules that we want to run through first. Rule number one is the five-year-old test. Now you've got judges looking through these applications who will be from all different sectors, all different industries. Um, so do avoid jargon. If you're if you use particular language within your sector, within your industry, try and think, is this would people recognise what I'm saying if they don't work within this space? So keep it simple. You don't want to alienate any of the readers of your application. So keep it simple, avoid any acronyms. No abbreviations, just use simple language that people can understand. Try and avoid advertising speak as well. We, we are here to celebrate the wins and, and sell yourself 
in a sense, but try and avoid too much jargon around advertising. We also want to ban some words on applications. Now just reading through the list, hopefully, probably, maybe, possibly, it, it, can, it can sound a bit doubtful, um, you know, we need you to be sure about what you're what you're sharing. You can do this. You will achieve this, and you have done this already. So just be really mindful of the language that you're using. You know, be certain with the with the achievements that you're wanting to be recognised for, so that the audience, the readers, can also um, relate to the stuff that you're sharing and be on the same page. So moving across now to the structure of the application. Now it's quite a simple simple form if you've, if you've not looked at it yet, broken down into simple sections um, and ultimately it, it's storytelling. They, they want to, the readers want to understand the past. So what have you done in the past? How did you land upon this particular opportunity? How did you get into the industry that you're working within? They also want to understand the present. So what is it that you're doing right now? What's the state of the business to date? And then they'll ask you a question about the future as well, future plans, the vision. So just breaking that down a little bit further, we'll go into each section in, in a little more depth. But first, you'll be asked to provide a business description. Now this business description, we need to be mindful around how this is used. Now this is a public summary, so please only include information that you are happy to be shared with the public eye. And this is a way where we can capture and present what exactly is it that you do. So, for example, in the if, if you are um, awarded as a finalist and you do attend the evening, we have a beautiful brochure which um, showcases everyone that's up for an award. So if your business is listed in that brochure, this public summary, this business description that you provide, will it will be a copy and paste job. It will be copied out and put into that brochure. So we need to be certain that the information is accurate, relevant, and doesn't include any sensitive information. And be mindful of how you're writing that public description. So try and avoid um, first person and, and write it from a third person sense. So the business does this as opposed to I create X, Y, Z. It's a very short description, um, around 50 words. Um, so it needs to be straight to the point, really concise, really clear with exactly what it is that you do. So paint a picture for the readers. What benefits are you providing? So your business enables who to solve what problems, offering what benefits. Just a really concise, simple sentence to capture a flavour to the business. In the first section of the application form, how your business started. Again, it's quite short. It's only around 200 words, 1,000 characters, and they do cut you off. Um, so there's no sneaking in an extra few words. You will be stopped at those 1,000 characters. So it's really important that we, that we offer quality information so that we can really capture what it is that messaging that we want to get across to the readers. So what really inspired you to get into the industry that you work in or to start the role that you're currently doing or launch your own business? What was it? What was the problem that you identified? What was the need that your customer had? What's the unique selling point? So really, really understand and reflect back on the opportunity that you identified and what made you start this business? What was the real gap in the market? When you are limited to words, good practice would be maybe start on a Word doc and bullet point some of the key points that you want to include in that section. And then we can start to build them out. But we know then that we're including all the relevant information that we need. We then move on to the future plans. So what's the real vision for the business? What what does good look like to you? What's success? But also what's been the progress to date? So what have you achieved? 
so far. If you are struggling for words or, or you've got external links somewhere on your website, for example, you can share links on the application form. So we can't upload anything, unfortunately. We can't attach any documents, but we can absolutely include external links. So if you were recognised previously for starting the business and you were published in a, in a newspaper, perhaps, or a magazine, share a link to that article. If you've got some amazing testimonials on your website, you know, share a link to those. We'd love to read them. Um, and it really brings it to life, the story that you're sharing. Now, there's a section all about you. So we really want to understand the brains behind the operation. Who is it that's running this business or working in this particular area or focusing on this project that you're being recognised for? What's your experience? So if you did start a business, what was your background before becoming a founder? What skills do you have that really, really add value to what it is that you're doing? What drives you? What motivates you? What gets you out of bed in the morning and gets you excited for what's ahead? Testimonials, reviews, anything that you've got that, that amplifies the work that you're doing. So really capture your strengths. You know, we, we want to celebrate your achievements. Um, this is often a section of the application where we don't, we don't get a clear picture of the founder. You know, naturally, um, women in particular, you, you, it's assumed, oh, well, I do that anyway. You know, I just do that because it's part of my job. Um, but no, really, really hone in on what exactly is it that makes you so great at what you do or what enables you to achieve the things that you have. Why I should win. Now, this section, again, we really need to amplify the amazing work that we're doing. I think it was last year, um, someone's application in this section, the first sentence, the opening line, I don't think I should win. Everyone who's been nominated for these awards, it's because you are doing amazing things. And the readers, we, we want to celebrate the success. We want you to do well. But we need you to help us understand the achievements that, we're, that, that you're working on, that, you, that you've achieved, um, the work that you're doing. So a, a good method could be to consider a key achievement that you have done. Is there a particular project that you've been involved in that we're being recognised for? What are your staff saying if you're fortunate enough to have a team? What do your colleagues say about you? What is it that you want to be recognised for, that you want to be shown a light on for? So let's focus on a key achievement, something that we can really build around. And what was the impact of that? So we really need to demonstrate the overall achievement that happened, who was affected, what great results did we see on the back of the work that you've done? Who else has been impacted? What challenges did you have to overcome to be able to create the success that you have. Again, bullet point, let's spend some time reflecting, ask colleagues to give you their input to reflect on the work that you did. So let's bullet point some, some achievements that, that you had that we want to highlight and then we can start building them out. And we really want to demonstrate that impact that we've had, whether it's internally in the workplace, whether it's out in the communities, whether it's supporting other founders, um, whether it's from a mentoring level, really, really think about the impact that you've created and what that's meant for the people around you. So some top tips here is to use external links. Let's bring it to life. Let's really storytell and amplify what it is that we want to share. Do include your social handles. Um, if you haven't been to the Enterprise Vision Awards before, uh, very big on social media. We love tagging you in things. Um, so please do include your social media handles. Um, you can also capture a lot about the individual from the social media, whether you're sharing success on LinkedIn, um, sharing things on Now X was Twitter, 
Um, so please do include accurate social handles for both yourself and for the business that we're talking about. We do ask for your business address. Um, and I just want to clarify on business address. We work hard with local um, PR agencies, with local newspapers. We like, we like showcasing the stories of the finalists. So it's really important that we know where your business is registered so that we can share that with the right people. Um, so we, if you are a, a business registered in an area where you don't live, perhaps it's crucial that we do have the business area so that we can make relevant connections. Photograph, you are asked to share a photograph. Again, this is used for marketing materials. Um, so that amazing brochure that we mentioned at the start, if you are a finalist, we would love to have a photo of you next to the business and next to the business description. So do make sure it's a photo that you're happy um, being spread around the public eye. Um, you know, we have seen them in the past uploaded hol holiday shots, uh, bikini shots on the beach or holding a, a cocktail or a beer in your hand. Um, so just be really mindful of how that photo is used and you know, ensure it's something that, that you're comfortable in being shared around in a professional setting. Do celebrate your success and so really spend some time reflecting. Um, the deadline for applications is 24th of May, um, so there is time um, to spend on this application and really thinking about what is it that we want to be recognised for. So spend some time reflecting, thinking, capturing some of the amazing things that we've done. Speak to colleagues, speak to your peers, um, speak to people within who, who you connected with and just really bring to life some of the work that you've done. This is an amazing, amazing opportunity to be recognised for the work that we're doing nationally, um, I must say. And we've had some amazing case studies on the back of it of successful founders um, that perhaps wouldn't have had the platform if it wasn't for the Enterprise Vision Awards. Um, so we want to hear about it. We do this. We love celebrating female founders, women in business. Um, but we, we, we can't celebrate unless we know your stories. Um, so yeah, really, really excited to get some of the applications in to read some of the amazing work that you're doing. So an action for everybody listening today. We want you to draft each section on a Word document. So break it down just as we did there. The past, the present and the future. And let's think about what is it that we want to celebrate? What is it that we want to talk about? And we can start building on from there. And I promise you the hardest thing at the end will be to condense it down. Because when you get working, when you get thinking, there's so much stuff that you want to include. But it really is just keeping it short, keeping it concise, condensed, so that the readers can have a, a good understanding as to what it is that we're doing. And that's all from me. Thank you very much. I think next, I believe we've got Debbie Tilly with us, um, who supported founders, business women in business, previous in the Evers, um, who's going to be sharing some top tips with you as well to ensure we can write a successful application. So Debbie, over to you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, yes, so I'm Debbie Tilly, and I help female founders to write and win an awards. So. Um, I get my presentation. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm right at the end of my presentation. <laughs> Let me take it all the way back to the start. Right. Okay. Now we can start. Okay. So as you can see, my vision is greater impact by female led business. And what I'm going to share with you today is my three crucial things. I've kind of distilled everything down to three crucial things that judges need from your application. And this is completely regardless of category that you're entering. Okay, so number one, impact. Okay, this is really, really crucially important. If you don't do this, the rest is completely irrelevant. So I want you to think about what difference are you making? Whose life are you making better? And how are you doing that? How are you making their life better? Um, but not only, don't think about what you did, don't talk about only what you did, but we want to know what the effect is. So 
you're this little dot of water that you can see in the picture here dropping down, okay? And you are creating a whole load of ripples. We want to know not only what you did, but what those ripples are. And the bigger the ripple, the better, okay? So keep going out, dig deep here until you get to a sort of bigger societal impact, you know, things like furthering gender equality, whatever it is that you're involved in, what your business does, um, like furthering gender equality, improving disability rights. Da, da, da. This is most important if you're going for a category, things like inspirational woman or even the categories like best business woman, okay? This is where you need, you need to be focusing on sort of like what impact you're creating. So instead of saying things like I ran eight webinars, think about how many people came along to those webinars. What was the objective of those webinars? It's much better to say things like I empowered over 200 female entrepreneurs with the knowledge to do X, Y and Z, whatever it was that you empowered them to do. OK, number two that the judges definitely, definitely need is evidence. For example, you may have claimed that your impact is that you're improving the lives of single mothers, whatever that is. OK, but how exactly do you prove that you can't be making unsubstantiated claims? You need to back these up. So two ways. Number one is statistics. OK, this involves you know, all the financial stuff, numbers of customers, number of attendees, things like your webinars, percentage growth. These are all important statistics in demonstrating your reach and your success. OK. But how do you go specifically about improving, proving that you have improved lives, okay? Whatever you said your impact is. This is where things like customer survey results really do come in. And this is surveys with thought, well thought out questions about the impact of whatever your product or your service is, okay? And there may be much more relevance that, okay? All very much dependent on what your business is things like referral rates, okay? Happy customers don't refer your business, your product, your service onto other people. So that may well be an important stat to show that, you know, you're, you're satisfying your customers and they're referring you on, okay? And lots of other KPIs, but also story, okay? This is what really gives the judges the feels. And this could be through sharing elements of your personal story, the relevant bits only, please. Uh, testimonials and customer case studies. I spoke to a judge a few weeks ago and they said, it's surprising how few people share customer case studies, i.e. customer stories about real people and what they what they did, how they impacted them. How many, how few people share that in their applications and the ones that do really, really stand out. Now, you might be thinking, I have not got much room here, Debbie. <laughs> okay, well, how do I share all this stuff? But it can be just a short story. I remember you've got no supporting documents to attach, but make you can link to these things and make the most of your social media and your website. There's no reason why you can't be sharing things like this in your social media channels and on your website. Um, but remember, one individual story can be very, very powerful and it can show massive impact for one individual. But the important thing is that it's memorable long, long after all the dry statistics have been forgotten or merged into one. OK, so stories are remembered. But remember, also always focus on impact, especially when you're picking out testimonials and things like that. You need both statistics and story and make it all as visual as possible again you're thinking how do i do that it's a written application but linking to things sharing photos social media your website press coverage video testimonials all through links or on your social media channels or your website okay and number three what judges really, really need, they need an easy life, <laughs> okay? They do not want to be seeing 
something like this, okay? That is a judge's absolute worst nightmare. So think about this, and this goes back to what Jess was talking about, the five-year-old test. So really think about, could, you know, even if a five-year-old could read that, would they actually want to? Do you want to read that? I know I don't. So break it up. Short sentences, short paragraphs, short words. You can see this pattern emerging here, can't you? No flowery language. You don't want judges reaching for their dictionaries. But don't go the other way and start sharing all your acronyms and everything. Okay, bullet points, headings, think accessibility and talk like an actual person as opposed to a corporate machine and demonstrate your passion really, really importantly. Those are entries which really stand out. Okay. And importantly, do not be afraid to share your challenges. A lot of people think that the judges need to see something that's a perfect picture, all rainbows and unicorns, okay? But think about watching a film or reading a book where there is no protagonist, okay? There's no enemy, there's no challenge to be overcome, there's no drama, okay? That's pretty boring to watch or to read. And it's also a little bit unbelievable, okay? So judges know that running a business is hard, hard, hard. And if you don't share your challenges, you can't demonstrate your learnings, you can't demonstrate your resilience, and you can't show your determination, okay? And all those things are what scores really, really big. So this might be what you're looking at right now, okay? So where do you even start when it comes to this? Like, oh, so many things. Okay, some great tips that Jess gave then, but talk about you starting off with bullet points, okay? My advice is that it doesn't matter where you start, just start, okay? But I always leave the introductory paragraph, the short description, always leave that to the end. So many people I know spend ages worrying about how to get the perfect intro okay but don't okay that is the synopsis of the entire story it's the little blurb that's on the back of the book you don't write that before you've written the book okay so so in summary focus on your impact evidence the whole thing and make reading easy make it easy for the judges to judge and finally just start okay it doesn't matter where just start okay so for you today i've got seven award bloopers which are free to download so if you want more writing tips on the awards then get that downloaded. It's got lots of tips on what to include and also importantly, what not to include, what not to do, okay? So get that downloaded. That's lots of things, lots and lots of tips. And, and sign up for my newsletter. So, We've got here lots more tips to be shared on award writing, okay, and info on upcoming masterclasses that I'm running. So as you can see from the testimony from Jamila, lots and lots of value, no fluff, no nonsense. So if you wanna find out lots more tips on how to do these things, how to focus on your impact and get your evidence, and most importantly, squash that all into a tiny, tiny little character count, then get signed it up, get signed up. But most importantly, get entering. Thank you, Debbie, that's amazing. <laughs> Do we, well, shall we just leave the um, QR code up there for a minute, just to give people a chance to scan that. 
And that will take them to your website, will it, Debs? Um, yeah, I'll just take you to to a um, landing page where you just stick in a few details and get you signed up. In fact, I'll put, I'll leave, I'll go back to that one because I'll take you to the mailing list as well. Wonderful. I love, I love the award bloopers. I think that's. <laughs> And in, and in 13 years, we've seen a lot of bloopers, haven't we, Lizzie? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, think the, I think one of the big things that um, we often see, and Jess and um, Debbie have both sort of hit upon it, with the photographs, because when they are cropped, um, it can look as though you're not wearing anything. And also think about what kind of photographs you'll actually see in papers and magazines. If it's just a headshot, the press are less likely to want to use that one. But if they've got somebody who's smiling and is, you know, it looks as though they're doing something, that's the sort of photograph they want to actually include in the press releases. Um, and also one, one thing that we touched upon with the business de description, we yes, we use that in the program, we use it in press releases, but we also use it on social media. And we do a lot of social media when um, the finalists are announced. So it's a really good opportunity to actually spread the word about what it is that you're doing. So think about it and write it in the third person. We will put lots of these different tips on our socials as well so that you can actually see what we're saying. And we will be sharing this afterwards as well. We've also got a message here as well from Lisa Hicks, who's watching, who says, can you include the code in the comments later please as she's watching on her uh, mobile phone yes we can do that fabulous thank you lizzie have we got any other questions that we've not addressed bear with me one second we haven't got any questions that have come through um there's a couple of things so ladies if you've got any questions oh um dovetail Lon london is saying will a replay be available Yes, we will be sharing the recording of this session. So that, that will be available. I think also um, somebody had asked me in an email about adding PDFs or case studies. And again, both Debbie and Jess have mentioned about how you can actually use your website or your socials to be doing that. Can I just add one thing about socials, Coral? Mm -hmm. So. If you're on social media, you get the opportunity to add links for your websites and the different social media um, platforms you're on. But if you haven't tweeted since 2021, you don't have to include that social media, just include links to socials where you're actually active. But this also gives you a time to be tweaking some of those, um, maybe you want to look at the messages that you're putting out on your socials or tweaking your website so it looks relevant because when the judges do look at your award your application they will go they'll follow those through and it can it can you know if they see something that's still talking about christmas and and it's coming into the summer they'll be sort of thinking not looking after your websites so yeah, it's very, very important. I know we had somebody last year who was a super application, but when we did the due diligence and checked, they don't want to see out-of-date information six months old. It needs to be um, up, to, up to date. So a number of people who are com com uh, commenting there about the download. So Lynn um, Petri said it wasn't working, but mm -hmm. uh, a couple of people saying, just try it twice, it was fine. So it is getting downloaded. So... <laughs> I know, poor Debbie. We, we knew it was working, didn't we, Debbie? Because it was all checked before we jumped on this call. So, but yeah, lots of ladies saying they've downloaded it. So thank you. And obviously you'll have Debbie's information there. So please do get in touch um, with Debbie. If you have, you know, you've got a contact details. If you've got any burning questions, I'm sure she'll be happy to um, connect with you off this call. Um, Heather, would you like to just talk a little bit, mention the NatWest, how they can get involved with the Accelerator? I know you've got one that's just started, um, but have yeah. you got some coming up? Yeah, so we'd actually just literally two weeks ago launched our latest cohort um, for the hubs, which are around the UK, the north of England. We've got one in Manchester, one in Leeds, one in Newcastle, but we've got them in 14 different locations across the UK. So wherever you are, you'll find one. If you literally 
Google or other platforms are available, um, NatWest Accelerator. You'll get the details there and you can actually find your nearest location. And if you are unable to reach one of those locations, there is a digital um, version as well. So the six month programme, so we just launched one um, and I'm just looking, going to say to Jess, but I would imagine by about May or June we'll be open for applications again. But you can, if you're interested, express put an express of interest on the website and someone will be in contact from our team, from the enterprise team. And the next one will launch around the time of the EVAs, with mid-September will be the dates when we will actually start the next one. So um, we do start getting filled up for applications fairly quickly. So, you know, have a look. If you're going to come to the awareness events we've got in Manchester and Leeds over the next um, couple of months, you'll come to one of our accelerator hubs so you actually get to see one and speak to some of the entrepreneurs on there. But Jess and I um, work in the Manchester hub and we have just over 100 entrepreneurs working with us there. Um, it's a fantastic programme. Don't take my word for it. Take theirs. Um, and we, we work with them so many different ways from the coaching that Jess delivers to my role, which is very much in the ecosystem, how we can bring that support into them. And the other side of it is actually, I'll take some of the learnings we have from the programme and take those into the communities that are a little bit further out from the city centre of Manchester. So we do share that expertise out as well. But right. um, yeah, just Google it, NatWest Accelerator, and you'll get all the details there. Yeah, that's why we work, love working with uh, NatWest because over the years we've had so many of our EVA entries go on to that programme and the feedback's been amazing. Um, so it's really um, helpful uh, for them and for their businesses to see them grow. But we've also got Lisa Hicks is commenting saying that um, she's on the NatWest AGP virtually and saying it's brilliant. Yeah, no. And that's really limited places. So at least you've done really well to get on the programme because it is, I think there's only 100 nationally on the um, the kind of digital version of the programme. But yeah, there's a couple of ladies actually on there from Coral who were winners last year. Um, so, you know, it's great to see that. But also, obviously, we do a lot of nominating from the women that we work with in the programme. And just to say that we do have more than half the people on the programme across the UK are female. I think we're about 55% in Manchester. If I remember right, Jess. So um, you know, you will not be allowed to play. She was very well welcome, and actually, we are outnumbering the men at this moment in time. Not that we don't like working with men, but just wanted to state the numbers. Oh, that's great stuff. And Helen Clawson also is joining us today, saying it's um, yes, the GP is fantastic. Uh, good to see you joining us, Helen. Thank you, and thanks for the feedback, ladies. Um, so, can we just have a quick round of applause for our amazing Jess and Debbie? Ladies, well done. Awesome presentation. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Um, so applications are open now. Don't forget, you have to enter to be in a chance to, to, to win, as they say. But please also think about those amazing women that you work with who no doubt will be too shy to put themselves forward. Um, so do make some nominations. You just need to visit the website. Uh, Lizzie, do you want to talk through how you do the nomination? So if you go to the enter page on the website, there's a simple button that you just um, can click and you can enter your nomination. Please just bear in mind that last year we had 1,553 nominations and out of those only 39 women self-nominated. So your nomination could really make a difference. Often um, people will think, oh, maybe I'm not good enough or maybe it's not my right time. But it really, they are good enough and it is the right time. So please do give them a nomination. Great stuff. And you just need the, the person's name, uh, telephone number and their um, email to enter them in. Um, choose whichever categories that you think is relevant. If you enter them for something that isn't relevant for them, um, they will be um, moved into a category that is relevant if we feel that they can compete there better. So don't worry, you don't need to know every detail about the business, it'll all be checked. And obviously for GDPR, anybody that you enter in their data that you put in there, we keep that ourselves. We don't use it for anything other than contacting them about their nomination. It's not passed on to third parties or anything like that. So please enter and nominate people with confidence, knowing that um, your data is safe. 
and everybody that is nominated, we contact them to make sure they're happy to go ahead. So nobody's forced into the awards. We really want them to uh, be on board and to enjoy the entire process from the entry through to the ceremony um, and beyond. Um, so unless we've got any more questions, Lizzie. Um, no, we've just got some ladies saying really appreciated the, se the session. I'm getting lots of um, loves and hearts and claps. <laughs> On the, on the, on the <laughs> great stuff thank you so much for joining us make sure that you have signed up for our e-letter so you can keep up with the latest uh, information do join us for our next events we've got a live event is it next week now lizzie in manchester it's the it's <laughs> it's 11th. thursday the 11th in, Put you on the spot in now. manchester and it is Tuesday the 19th of May in Leeds and we were just adding something to the calendar we're going to do an online information event um, in mid-May and I'll add that onto the website yeah and Lisa the awards night is a um, very important question that one so well done <laughs> It is Friday the 27th of September at the Empress Ballrooms at the Winter Gardens in Blackpool. Um, yep, it's um, a, a big night of celebration and um, everybody goes to town. It is like the Oscars. Um, so yeah, information on the awards ceremony can be found on the website as well if you go to uh, event and then all the information is there. So I think that about wraps it up. We've got, had an amazing team working with this morning. So thanks to the ladies for joining us, Heather, Jess and Debbie. Thank you so much for giving your time. And of course, my amazing sidekick, Lizzie. I couldn't do it without her. She helps do it, creating all of these things. So thank you.